So Unity is large and complex, which means that you will inevitably run into problems. It's normal. It's uh, bugs and issues are just something that Unity developers get used to and uh, you develop strategies for dealing with them. And I just want to talk about a few of the obvious strategies. Now, uh, in class, I've noticed that quite a lot of people, now that they've got started with Unity, uh, they've filled up their folders really, really quickly. And if you go into this PC and have a look, you may find that you have used up all your gigabytes and you need to delete some stuff. Um, particularly if you've made more than one Unity project. I've got a feeling that one Unity a project at a time is about the maximum that most student accounts will be able to cope with. What you may also find is if you have filled up your folder and it was like halfway through uh, a process that Unity was doing, like unpacking something, it might have got corrupted and you might have um, things which are half unpacked and you might have to do re-imports or something. Sometimes, let's be blunt, the right thing to do is to start all over again. Hopefully that won't happen to you. Just keep an eye on this and if it's getting close, then um, cut, yeah, delete some stuff so that you that's less likely to happen. Uh, another thing that's still happening is people are following the wrong path. So if you go to open something and you inadvertently go through the documents path to your folder, then you're going to have problems and uh, that can happen in more than one way. So always be really mindful of going to your H drive and opening things that way. Right, so those are just the standard things I look for every single time I go to someone's computer. Now let's look at uh, something else. So once you've got things up and running, um, you will sometimes have issues where it just won't run. You hit the play and it says something like this. All compiler errors have to be fixed before you can enter play mode. So what we're going to start looking at now is the console. So you see down here, I've got my usual project window. I've got this console open here. Now I've got 485 warnings and one error. The 485 warnings um, are all the same one. They're all this error here, about two audio listeners in the scene. And the one error, I actually just put that in just to prove a point. Uh, the way this works is you can toggle off whether or not they're showing. So toggling that to on shows that kind of error. And that, so you can see or not see the different types of error. So this is the error that I had. And it says that in this script, in the first person controller, uh, something, the name boo could not be found. So... This kind of error is a clue. It's not going to give you the answer. It's not going to tell you what the problem is necessarily, but it should, well, it may point you in the right direction. So obviously the first thing, thing that I'm going to be looking at here is this first person controller.cs file. And um, I know that that's part of the first person character and it's this script here. So if you double click that, it will open Visual Studio where you can look at the script script to stuff we're going to be looking at later. I've already done this and this was the stuff up I put in. I deleted one letter. So private ball is working. Save that and my error will have gone away. And now I can play my game. Yay, awesome. Um, it would be instructive though to look at these errors, these, sorry, these warnings that are here because one of the key skills of a Unity developer is being able to Google stuff. So um, I'm going to click on one of these and it says there are two audio listeners in the scene. I happen to know why that is, but what's going to be instructive is if we copy the error and we go to the Google and paste that exact error and have a look. What I would normally do is I would open up two or three tabs so I can just quickly flick to them and have a look. Uh, things to notice, this is answers.unity.com. They're often pretty useful, the answers.unity.com or forum.unity.com. So they're at least on a relatively official um, platform. You know, uh, gamedev.stackexchange.com, typically they're going to be good, but they're going to be uh, perhaps at a higher level than uh, the Unity forum ones. You know, it, it, it varies. 
So uh, the other thing that I just wanted to look at here is dates. So this is 2012, this is 2015, this is 2010. Unity changes quite a lot between versions. So it's often a good idea to look at the more recent uh, responses because they can be more relevant. Um, so let's have a look here. We just need to basically scan and skim and just check and see whether this is likely to be useful or not. So here I say this one, this reply has got 34 upvotes. So the odds are that's quite useful. And uh, this one's got seven upvotes. That could also be useful. I do note it's 2012. Um, 2015, I think that's pretty much the same answer, that one by the look of it. And this one, 2010. Um, I thought this was quite useful, this one, because uh, you, you got to look at people and you, you gain something. Uh, it's just you're using your common sense. So, for example, this guy, Andy, who looks a bit strange, uh, has posted to 8,000 times and he's been on here since 2005. So his answers are likely to be useful, but this answer was from 2010. Uh, and what I noticed, this, this guy here tells you how to turn uh, audio listeners on and off. This answer's from 2014, and then someone comes along and says, ah, in this new version, it's this format. There's a slight difference in terms of how the brackets use, typical kind of unity irritation. So those are the kinds of things to watch out for. Um, anyway, it turns out that that's not our problem. Uh, the problem is that we've got a, we, we already had a main camera in the scene that shows us that view, and then we added an FPS controller, which also has a camera. And they each have an audio listener as well. That's how you get your sound. You know, if you're close to something, the listener um, makes it louder or, or not. That's just normal for 3D games. Uh, we don't need a main camera anymore, so we can just delete that. And then I'm just going to clear all my error messages and hit play again. And we're no more errors. That's great. No more warnings even. Bit of common sense goes a long way. Don't expect the answers to just pop up immediately. Um, just hunt around and yeah, just don't get disheartened. That's the key. Um, sometimes you can spend ages banging your head against a particular problem and then you come back the next day and just go, oh, I know what the problem was and you fix it. Uh, there you go.